Hello and welcome. Today I have for you this beautiful little friend that I have just made. It is a cornet straight from the factories of China and it can be yours complete with mouthpiece, case and all the cleaning materials that you're going to need to make it work for just 120 of your US dollars. This was kindly sent to me uh, by the Tom Top website. Um, the link to them is down in the description below. The instrument is fairly unremarkable when it comes to features. Uh, you've got a bell here that has got a, a curious flare profile to it, which sort of reminds me of some of the old Besson and Boozy and Hawks uh, cornets that you could get in decades gone by. It has a mouthpiece which looks very, very similar to the Dennis Wick shaped mouthpieces, although this has got nothing stamped on it. It has a saddle for the first valve tuning slide, and it has a ring for the third valve tuning slide. Uh, and that third valve tuning slide is probably the one thing about this instrument that I think is absolutely stupid. See, the third valve tuning slide ring has got a lump. It has got a growth under the bottom of it. And uh, that interferes with the primary function of this tuning slide. See, the idea for this component here is that when you're playing, you put your finger into it, whatever finger you prefer, and you can slide out the third valve tuning slide. You're going to want to do that because it adjusts the tuning of certain notes, and those certain notes would be out of tune if you didn't adjust the tuning slide. So it's a very necessary component on, a, uh, on any really valved instrument. Um, but this one has got this little growth down the bottom. And I know why they've tried to put that there. It is so that you don't extend the tuning slide any more than you want to. The trouble is, if you've got reasonably large hands like I do, that uh, growth limits the placement of the third valve tuning slide ring. So I, want, I don't want this ring all the way up here. I want it extended quite far. Um, but if I have it where I want it to go, it prevents the third valve tuning slide from moving at all. So we've got a component which uh, they've added a secondary function to it, and I'm all for innovation, but that secondary function greatly interferes with its ability to do its primary function. And so as a consequence, you get something that has just made it worse. So I'm considering getting rid of it. The other component part is that it's really poorly made and there's extra burrs and things on the bottom of that growth that uh, suggests it's metastasizing so I probably want to cut that off at some point. I mentioned at the start of the video that this instrument comes with a number of cleaning supplies. It comes with a mouthpiece cleaning brush which you'll want to use. It comes with a brush that goes down the uh, barrels of the valves which you'll definitely want to use and it also comes with a long flexible brush that you can use to clean out the inner tubes of the instrument. Um, I had to do a fair bit of cleaning for, for the, uh, before this review and I always recommend when you buy uh, a new instrument, particularly if it's a, a more inexpensive instrument, that you clean it out thoroughly. Uh, it will prevent any uh, dust or me metallic particles from getting in and causing scratches on the components that move uh, on your instrument. The, uh, the valves themselves are actually pretty well made. Um, I'm actually reasonably impressed with these valves. Um, out of all of the valves that I've seen on cheap instruments, these ones are the cleanest that I've seen. Although I did notice when I was giving them a bit of inspection that um, one of the manufacturing steps where you sort of uh, use a cutting tool to uh, chamfer the edges of the, the brass part of the bell, whoever did that uh, forgot to do it. And so what I found when I was looking at these valves is that there were just a couple of uh, little chips of brass that hadn't been cut away and had I not removed them myself these valves would be pretty knackered pretty quickly. So it's something that just goes to highlight the importance of checking and cleaning uh, whenever you buy an inexpensive instrument. One of the questions I ask myself when I get presented with inexpensive instruments like this is whether or not there is a circumstance in which I would spend my own money on this 
and I think in the case of this particular instrument, and indeed in, in most of the instruments that I have reviewed from the TomTop website, is that if you're an established player, I wouldn't bother with it. But if you're a parent or you've got a child or someone who might have an interest in music and you want to get them something that they can use to uh, start off, then this is the sort of thing that is just perfect. Um, plastic instruments are quite hard to play. They, uh, they make the job of playing uh, a little bit more difficult, although they are more durable. Um, my next recommendation would be to hire an instrument, which you can do for sometimes quite a short term. That would be a, a really good way to um, uh, gauge a child's interest. Um, but something like this may be better if you've got a child that wants to play for a few years. Uh, so if you're faced with the choice of trying to support somebody who may or may not actually continue with learning a brass instrument, then a cheap instrument like this, which looks nice, has the visual appeal, uh, can be a great way to start them off. Uh, so you can, if you are interested and you do have $120 in which you can part with, then check out the link below and you will be able to uh, pursue the purchasing of something like this. Uh, if you've got any questions about this particular instrument or any of the other inexpensive instruments I have reviewed, then please feel free to drop a comment in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.